Well, we are so back after the break. And I don't know if anyone ever watching our YouTube channel, you could see that I probably do <laughs> multitask or at least I try to. So, I, and and I, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> because you're better than me and something else again. I don't know it's not better. I just don't like it. No, you're better. <laughs> I, like, and, and I'm lazy. I'm just lazy. You're not lazy. Uh, and I, 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 well, I am. We know this is just a side note <laughs> joke. This is a, Pete and I make this joke all the time. We always say on the outside, Pete seems, you know, he's, he's Buddhist practitioner here, very Zen, but on the inside, he's like, has four jobs. Yeah. It's four jobs and multitasking <laughs> me on the outside. A lot of people see me as like very high energy or whatever. And I'm like, on the inside, I'm like, yeah, just, I just like want to sit. <laughs> <laughs> it is so funny. I, I love that sit. paradox of you and I. <laughs> yes, I do too. Well, we're going to talk about multitasking today because this is something that, well, I, I don't, I, if I was prepared, hey, producers, where are you with this? But the, I, I remember reading a study from Harvard that the brain actually can't multitask. Is you it? are just reading my mind. Pete. For real? I yes, I don't, I didn't, I don't remember where the study came from, but I learned it in grad school. And I share that, that fact with patients we, that it's an we, illusion. We have to we make sure this is, that this is a fact though. Are we like making this yeah, up? Yeah, we got, yeah, no, because I, I don't, I'm saying, I don't know what the study is, but I but I did, I learned that because I share, I share that all the time with people. It's just an illusion, right? Yeah. We don't, we don't actually multitask what we're actually doing. And look to be fair, because a few times argue to me like, well, I can, I can listen to this podcast while I go on a run. And I'm like, okay, fair. You're doing two behaviors at the same time, right. but, atten but I think intentionally what happens, it's really the mind going back and forth between what's it paying attention to. So That's right. if you're going on a run while listening to our podcast, you're either more focused on the podcast or you're more focused on the run That's or right. you're jumping back and forth between the two. You can't hold attention on two things at the same time. Right. And it, like if you're on the elliptical or running, you're kind of a hamster on the wheel. So you don't have yes. to think too much about it unless you're like hiking or running in like right. having to, right. And, and in that case, you're not really hearing what you and I are saying. Right. Right. Because exactly. you're also making sure you don't fall and bust your head. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so. exactly. Well, and so this is where it weaves in obviously with mindfulness, right? Like mindfulness is helping us see like, pay attention to just one thing at a time because, you know, the multitasking illusion, um, which I will say, and I'm curious to hear what, you know, what listeners uh, that are not in the United States think, but I feel like this is a very like American cultural um, oh, that's behavior. so interesting. Yeah, probably. Right. I mean, I think you you're right. Yeah. Right. Cause we're, we're, we're a culture that, um, you know, we, we get very attached to the value of productivity. Right. Well, what you just talked about, I love the way you see, you're so good the way you yeah. put that. Well, you did, you're like, you're doing two behaviors at the same time, but you're running and you're listening. And mm -hmm. so that uh, is, 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 is switching. So the, yes. Right. And, and, in the nine, I just looked, I just <laughs> looked this up another behavior. <laughs> uh, so it was Rogers and Monsell, uh, they, in the, in the mid nineties. So that could have been what we were learning, but they found that there's the cost of switching. And so that, mm -hmm. that basically one attributable, um, to the time taken to adjust the mental control setting. So you're having to switch between tasks that you're not actually doing it. And they studied um, two or four trials of two tasks at the same time. And, mm -hmm. and you weren't able to be focused on one task at a time. Uh, you could only be focused on one task at a time. And was it, and I'm curious if it was in the study or not, did it say uh, what the outcome of uh, the like effectiveness of the behavior is? Because I think that's also part of the myth I try to explain to people is that people think, no, I can do not only do more than multiple things at once, I can do them really well. What I tell them is no, when you try to do multiple things at once, the effectiveness or efficiency suffers because well, of you're, switching. Well, you're just smart because you're right. I, the way they study, <laughs> I think I just the, remember. I just remember. Well, it was well, because you're, you're smart, but there was they looked at the time, mm. both the time to switch and the, the time that you would focus on that task. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, I guess, obviously, what you're saying is, uh, you know there'd be less time on one task than the Correct. other and probably more time to switch between, which means you're not being efficient. Yes, exactly. Right. So it's like when you're mindfully doing one thing at a time, right. while there's a story, again, I'm going to use through the uh, lens of, of a, uh, American culture here, since you and I are uh, living in the United States and American, uh, American citizens, um, there's a belief or a story that like, oh, I'm doing everything really well. It's like, no, one mindfully at a time is even though you're letting go of other tasks, holistically, you're going to be more effective because you're putting in mindful, consistent attention and effort into one thing, right. complete that to its end. And then you can go to the next thing. So if you're constantly doing lots of things at once, 
it's again, it's just noise. That busyness is just an illusion that you're getting a lot of stuff done. Right. It's an illusion. So I'm going to read a definition here. So we already, we've already said it. So, you know, sometimes we'll break it down. So the multitasking is like two or more tasks simultaneously switching back and forth. That's actually the definition Mm -hmm. uh, or or performing a number of tasks in rapid succession. Mm -hmm. And what we find here, uh, multitasking takes a serious toll on productivity. Our brains Mm -hmm. lack the ability to perform multiple tasks at the same time. In moments where we think we're multitasking, we're likely just uh, switching quickly from task to task. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is exactly what you and I have just been saying. Just wanted to break that down quicker. So you think you're doing things simultaneously. You're not. You're not. not, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And it it adds to this, but it's like, um, you know, it adds to this story that a lot of us really like. Like I... I, I do things, right? Yes. I do things. Yes, I get you sure things do. done. It, yeah, I do things. And it's, you know, I, I, of course I'm, uh, thinking about the, um, the saying, and I think we've said it on this podcast before, like where it's like, we're, we're human beings, not human doings. Right. You know, oh, I like and, that. And again, and it, it leads where'd you get that it, from? I don't know. That it's sounds not, like I, our it's friend. Like it's, a Buddha, it's like a Buddhist thing. Well, I, it is, but I, it sounds like an act thing for that. sounds like, um, Dr. Michael Feminella would have said something like that. Hey, hey, Mike, if you're hey, out Mike. there listening, <laughs> I know. I know he's but I remember he would that. always say that, like the doing, like yeah, do the courage. doing, yeah. the do it, yeah, do yes, uh, yeah. I don't remember who taught it to me, but it, it just so resonated with me. And it's like, yeah, we we it, again, especially in the United States, we love to be human doings, and it's not. And to be clear, like <laughs> it doesn't that. it doesn't mean we shouldn't do stuff. It's just that it's an illusion that the more we do, the better. And it's like. Eh, yeah, it, the research as Pete's talking about actually says otherwise. Well, I think you're right. That is, that would definitely be more Western. Mm-hmm. I yeah, would agree with that. That's yeah, more yeah, American. It's like, actually, probably just American. It, and more American, right? Yeah. More well, both. I'm sure, but more well, because if you compare to you know to in Europe, like I I study abroad in um, I study abroad in, in Madrid in Spain, which I loved and years and when, ago, years years ago, <laughs> years ago. But I loved it, and and you know, in in just one big sort of obvious cultural difference is literally every day this yeah. is yes the siesta comes from yes, the yes, stores yes. close all the stores close Goodbye. at two o'clock so yeah. you go home for like three hours you eat your big lunch which is the main big meal of the day there and yeah. then they reopen and you know in the united states can you imagine what people would say but you can't you can't go return that sweater at the gap i don't understand right yeah, that's my lunch break that's my lunch break you yeah. know well, well, so Pete, for you, I'm wondering, because like you said, you, you do like to buy into that illusion sometimes, right? Even on the podcast, but yes. Yes. So, well, I don't know. What's your personal experience then uh, with attempting it's exhausting. to multi- <laughs> exhausting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's what I imagine. Yeah. Maybe can you tell people more about that? Well, Cause and at this point now I do it mindfully. So like when I'm doing it, I'm aware. You're of what aware I'm that doing. you're doing. Yeah. Right? So like, I, I think, and I'm doing it non-judgmentally and I'm slowly bringing it back to, you know, trying to get one mindful, right. Isn't that mm-hmm. the DBT one mindfulness? Yeah, that's the DBT term. Yeah, Why don't you give mind. us that? It's just, uh, well, in dialectical behavior therapy, um, you know, has done a nice job of often uh, pulling apart the different aspects of mindfulness. And one of them is a definition they, they refer to as one, one mindfully, which is just do one thing at a time. So they'll say like, when you're walking, walk, when you're eating, eat, when you're watching TV, watch TV, right? Talking on the phone, talk on the phone. Uh, but, you know, we, we have a hard time doing that, especially, I can't believe we haven't said this yet in the, our era with all of our devices, those right? De- those devices. Those so devices. So you don't like the brain. I don't like the devices. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know you love I, the brain. <laughs> I love the brain, but I also don't like the devices. No, I love the brain. I I, I don't like the story about the brain, that the yeah. brain is like this all powerful, you know, omnipotent um, organ. We don't even use it. Yeah. We, I mean, no, but- that, Was that movie Lucy? That, but, oh yeah, Lucy. Yeah. Yeah. That's another episode. I, I don't know what I think about that movie. Um, but yes, the devices, it's like, think how many people, like I I would do this, right? It's like, you've got the computer open, you got the phone open, you're watching television, you're it's, talking it's, to, it's you terrible. Know, like your friend or your partner or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, it doesn't, like, it's exhausting. So like, I, I think, you know, most people um, can relate to this. Can you just share a little bit more about for you, like the impact, if, if yeah. you're willing? Well, it, it makes me feel stressed. Mm-hmm. It makes me feel less well. It it is uh, you know, I'm I'm less connected in that mm. in those moments. You know, yeah. so like I'm thinking about just yesterday 
you know, um, I've got a whole new team of providers, you know, working with me and new postdocs and all that. And so everyone's getting used to the system, getting used to me as part mm-hmm. of the system, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place. Like I mm-hmm. lit- quite literally, like I, mm-hmm. I don't stay in one building anymore. Like mm-hmm. I, my job was always that I had multiple like locations to go to, but now yeah. it's like even in one location, I'm going to like seven or eight oh, different locations. So tiring. So hard. <laughs> Um, and so, you know, but you come back and there's an email from your, you know, from somebody if they respond to, and there's a text message. And, you know, uh, so I think that that speaks to those devices because the devices mm-hmm. keep us constantly connected mm-hmm. and it's both good and bad. You know, it's, it allows me to be able to do work mm-hmm. in places where like if I'm on the beach or whatever, mm-hmm. Sure. but it also then doesn't allow me to like disconnect and enjoy the waves. Right, right. Well, and so I, you know, you're gonna laugh when I say this. I would uh, <laughs> see. I would, I would let go of the judgment of good or bad. It, it, yes. it can both work and not work. So I would say that example of, you know, it allows me to work on the beach. It's like, is that workable? Right. You know. Yes. It's like I feel like that's the that's part of the story, right? Of like we need to, we need to be human doings. Like we've got to right. do all the time, you know. Right. And, right. right. And, and do we? just leave your phone at home and go to the beach. Like that's right. what I, that's what I ultimately practice. What I'm trying to do, I'll share with you what I'm trying yeah. to do. So over the summer, one of the things I did was every month I, mm-hmm. for oh, one week per month, I didn't schedule appointments. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Still work, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I didn't schedule appointments. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, I'm trying to carry that into, into the, into the fall. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it made a difference. It does make a difference because it's like, you know, what what I um, am thinking about as we're talking about this is, you know, multitasking. You know, it's funny, obviously, I, hopefully this message is coming through. Obviously, Pete, even though Pete likes to practice it, uh, it, we're definitely communicating to you guys, right? Like, we're not fans. This is actually not a really effective mode. Right. And, and I want to be clear, we're not against being productive. Productivity is a value. Like it is useful. We, we, need, yes. we do need to get things done though. Multitasking takes away space, right? It's like filled with noise. Like I often have conversations with patients about busyness behavior. And I certainly have been um, guilty of that in, in my life. And I've really worked on letting go of the busyness, like filling up filling up all the space with, with doing, um, which, you know, is, is like a sibling of multitasking, I would say. Right. Right. (laughs) You know, so maybe, you know, I'm not somebody that does a lot of multitasking, but I have historically done a lot of busyness behavior. Well, Um, you're a doer. I'm a do Right. And I've worked and continue to work on as, as Pete's talking about doing less. And, and I think what's just fascinating. And I think this is so hard for people to believe when they're really practiced at, um, at multitasking or busyness is that you, the space isn't going to get in the way of you getting things done. Cause I think no. that's the fear. Like, I think the fear is if I let go of multitasking, if I let go of busyness, if we even go to devices, right? Like if I don't, if I put an away message on my email, I'm going to miss something important and something bad will happen. And yeah. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. And it's I don't like, like those away messages on email. Oh, I do. Cause I'm like, don't contact it. <laughs> That's what I yeah, like. But you'll I... get back when you get back. I mean, that also is a societal expectation oh, right. of like, if you don't I mean, get that's back. That's fair. That's fair. I more think of it as like a, um, a courtesy of like, I, in terms of my respect, like I wouldn't want someone to think I'm not responding to their email. I want them to know no, I, I'm I, away. I, I got right. you. But I hear, I hear what you're saying, but, right. but you know what I mean about like the, like the, is that a reinforcement? What, what which part? That we that then we reinforce that everyone expects the response within a certain amount of time. Uh, it is, yeah, no, it is. I, I guess you and I just have a different opinion of. I think it's like a respectful. <laughs> I think it's respectful. No, like, I, don't, I, think, I it's, think it's respectful yeah, too. You yeah. guys, but by the way, it's disrespectful yeah. when I have to keep getting those re- like every time you're in an email chain and then I keep oh, getting yeah. the, I'm away, I'm away, I'm away. Oh, delete, right. oh, right. I have to delete <laughs> yeah. it. Well, that's that's where you can say I select on mine only to people that are in my. Um, in my oh. like in my address book so it won't send it to a listserv oh interesting okay yeah yeah so that's all anyway sorry yeah so <laughs> but i think um but but you know what i'm saying about this yes. this fear that people have if if they make the space if they let go of multitasking if they let go of busyness that basically that so something bad will happen well that's interesting that you say that because i was just reading about the the brain which you love mm-hmm. and so I- what we <laughs> what research shows us is that we're we're for actually takes us four times longer to, to complete a task when we're multitasking. Makes total sense. To I know it would to you. I knew you'd like that. 
Um, <laughs> it also indicates that you're you're forty percent less productive when you're multitasking. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then this piece, I thought you would really like it because of what you're just saying. It's there's like a pleasure seeking principle in there mm-hmm. where you're trying to let almost people please. Yeah. So that sometimes the multitasking creates dopamine. Uh, because you feel, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Well, and I was, I was actually thinking it's even people pleasing yourself because it goes yes. back to that story of like, what a good job I'm doing. That's right? right. Look how yeah. on top of things I am. Well, and the right? dopamine's really there. Yeah, it. it's really there. Well, well, so Pete, you know, I, I think we definitely like can't end this episode without giving folks some suggestions about how to let go of multitasking or, or busyness a little bit. Who should bit. say like, it? What would you? Who should say I it? I think, well, I think you, I think you, you, you need All to roads lead to mindfulness. There oh, it is. Oh, that. <laughs> That I was not reading your mind in that moment. I don't know, but wait, yes, all roads lead listeners, it's happened. You you did not read my mind once. <laughs> I did not read. I did not read your mind. That once. may have been the first time. Yeah, I think. How so. dare you so. though? That was like I'm that sorry. was. It's I, I'm I like tired. I lobbed that. That was like I a know you steak. I might well, says the vegetarian. But. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, but to, but to a non-vegetarian, I would have eaten that steak. <laughs> um, I'm just. I think that's look. See, I'm getting back from summer. Just. The race in the wheels here. Yeah, That's but all right. roads lead to mindfulness. Yeah, please. So, so. Yeah, so please. other things are just, I mean, I think there are, there's research that shows like work for like 45 minutes and take a five minute break, you know, mm-hmm. standing desk posture. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I guess trying to have like some devices away, you know, so like if you're on your computer typing a paper, maybe put your phones in the other room. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, you know, so there, there, are, there are behavioral strategies to try and work for being more focused. Mm -hmm. Um, attentional practices a lot of the research you look at with multitasking focuses on attention and so where's your attentional efforts going and and so trying to really put your efforts towards the one thing that you are doing so practicing one mindfulness from dbt or an an actual an actual mindfulness practice like a sitting practice will you know we've mentioned this for that we say that that well, uh, no, I don't all think we did, we did, but with that, that's true. But, but I think it's important to say like the actual sitting practice will in this is, you know, another, you know, uh, Western, um, uh, scientific, uh, data point here, you will grow neurons in the frontal lobe, right? That's one yes. of the areas we grow neurons, which helps you pay attention. Well, before we, so before, as we end, let's throw that in too. That's all the executive functioning. So that's why the yes. frontal lobe is, and that's a big piece of multitasking uh, is being able to train your frontal lobe for that executive functioning capacity. Yes. Yes. And I think I want to just reinforce what Pete was saying about some of the behavioral strategies. It sounds simple. Mm-mm. Turning the stuff off is actually really important. So like, mm-hmm. you know, this is, you know, uh, we're still in the, it's this September, 2021, we're recording this. So we're still in the pandemic. So Pete and I do a lot of telehealth, right? Mm-hmm. And that's one thing, for example, people are on their computers. I have to tell people a lot of times, I want you to turn off all the notifications. Yeah. Like we're just in do. therapy, like turn right. off your iMessage, turn off your email, close all the windows because it's going to help you to focus. Right. right. So this can be said of anything. It's like, if you, if you just basically get rid of those other things, it's going to um, create an environment that's going to help your brain uh, be better able to just do one thing. But I think we also got to say, you got to go into it knowing you might feel scared that something and you will miss something and you will miss. Well, yeah. And it's like, that's, and that's okay. So are you willing to feel uncomfortable and do one thing at a time. And it's like a little behavioral experiment. See what happens. See if your experience matches what the research beat and I shared today. You're such a good little researcher over there. <laughs> well, I, I am not, you're the, well, you I, are. With, I'm, I'm, with, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a great consumer of research. <laughs> you're a consumer of research and you apply it in your clinical setting. Well, this was yes. great. Thank you, Nikki. So for, I'm going to say for all those Americans out there, because this is likely more of an American thing. <laughs> yes. What you, when you think you're multitasking, look at it, watch it, do it non-judgmentally, because it's taking you four times longer and you are 40% less productive. This has been When East Meets West. I'm Dr. Pete Economo. And I'm Dr. Nikki Rubin. Be present, be brave. This has been When East Meets West. All material is based on opinion and educational training of Drs. Pete Economo and Nikki Rubin. Content is for informational and educational purposes 